Um, it's now time for the gold medal presentations uh, to two of our most distinguished members. Each has uh, a gold medal address that will be given later in the week. There's an error in the schedule as printed this afternoon. The uh, presentation of the gold medal uh, to Greg DeVore will be by uh, Roberto Romero, the director of the Eunice Kennedy Shriver NICHD perinatal research branch uh, in Detroit. Roberto. Josh, Tom, I would like to begin by congratulating uh, Chris and Daniela for an outstanding meeting in Vienna. Um, yesterday, I went to the University of Vienna. And for those who had not had the opportunity to see the courtyard, the Simmelweis, Rocky Tansky, Bill Roth, and a cast of characters that change the direction of medicine. So now is the human side of the program, no more science. And um, I would like to introduce Greg DeVore, and this is his law, Fidel Echocardiography. Greg went to medical school at the University of Utah, 1971 75. He won numerous awards in neurology, and he was destined to become an internist. He moved from the University of Utah to New Haven, Connecticut, and there he had a change of hearts. From internal medicine, he went into obstetrics and gynecology, and I had the privilege to be a first-year resident with Greg, and we worked together for three years. This is approximately a picture taken in 1970, the chair of the department, and this is Greg over here. When we were residents, uh, second and third year residents, we confronted a patient who died with a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. And that led to that fundamental question of at what level of ACG was an ectopic pregnancy or a normal gestation detected. And that is the paper, the discriminatory ACG zone. And I learned from Dirk that we have a session, and this continues to be an important question today. That paper has 369 citations. We are not cited anymore. It doesn't matter, because the rate of rupture ectopic pregnancy when we began working was 90%, and today is less than 10%. Our mentor was John Hobbins, here at a reception at the Cornell Club at an ISWEP meeting in 2002. And I'd like to show you some of the cast of characters who worked together in New Haven. Here is Greg. Here is Josh. Here is Alfred Abuhamed. Here is Gianluigi Pilu, a former president of ISEOG. Here is Felipe Gianti, a giant on his own. Frank Chervenac, and Giancarlo Mari, and Sigi Ronmich. An exceptionally talented group of people working in a place where there are only two fellows a year. After finishing his residence, his residency and fellowship, uh, he went to the University of Southern California, met Larry Platt, and the rest is history. Here, are the papers that Greg published in fetal echocardiography. I'm not going to read to you these papers. They're classic papers, and these are the number of citations of each one of them. This publication in the White Journal, introducing spatial temporal image correlation as a new technology to evaluate the fetal heart, had 353 citations so far. And here are three images, all obtained by Greg of the fetal heart. A sampling of the pioneering discoveries that he has made include a dilated aorta as a screening tool for tetralogy of a law, screening examination of the outflow tracts, evaluation of the right ventricular preload using the doctor's venosus, and all of those. After being at the University of Southern California, I persuaded Greg to come back 
for us to work together at the perinatology research branch. And this is Greg celebrating with many of our fellows and our faculty a number of studies that we did examining fetal cardiac dysfunction in premature rupture membranes. Believe it or not, it happens and is not well known. And then using stick to look at cardiac views, all with many citations. This is another publication in the Y Journal, the SPIN technique, number of citations. Greg has been awarded by the American Institute of Ultrasound in Medicine with the Joseph Holmes Clinical Pioneer Award. He is now a professor of obstetrics and gynecology at the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA. And here are two beautiful movies of his most recent work. Here, two-dimensional spec tracking of the fetal heart, a practical approach to for the fetal sonologies. And here, two papers, fresh in the white journal, 24 segment sphericity index, and this as a tool to assess fetal cardiac dysfunction. But those papers accepted are not enough. These are the ones that are in press, one, two, and three. So Greg, um, as I reflected in the life of Sigmund Freud, a home that I would like to recommend you to visit while you are in Vienna. Sigmund Freud was in private practice, but he became a legend because of the introduction of psychoanalysis. So Greg began in academic medicine, did private practice, and now has returned. And what a return to academic medicine. This is his website. Greg, I have had the privilege of knowing Dorothy for many years. They have seven children, and we are delighted that they are here with their spouses to celebrate this recognition of Greg DeVore. And here, Dorothy, Greg, so that the other sons look taller. And here is the entire family. So, Greg, on behalf of the Gold Medal Committee, a select group that includes the former gold medal winners in behalf of ISEOG. Um, I'm honored to present you as the Ian Donald Gold Medal Award for Clinical Achievements. Greg. I asked Josh if I could just say a couple words. I think as we look at our own careers in, in ultrasound and, and obstetrics and gynecology, we need to go back 27 years and thank Stuart Campbell for having the insight and, the, and just the, 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 the concept of, of starting this society so that we all can benefit from all the years and all the experience and all the lectures and the talks that have been given. We also need to thank a number of people. In, in my particular career, the most important person I, that I would love to thank is my wife, Dorothy. As you saw, we have seven children. I was not home all the time, and I was often doing uh, research involved in a clinical environment. And for those of you who are married and have spouses who support you, the most important thing that your spouse can do is ask the question, or not ask the question, where have you been? Why are you late? Why did you miss the birthday party? Why couldn't you come to the special affair? And hopefully you don't have somebody on the side. Okay. But the point is, is your spouse who supports you will make your career because you have the caring and you have the, the, the support at home that allows you to take and spend those extra hours doing what you love. I'm also grateful for my children who also, I miss birthdays and I miss special events because of what I did in my career. So those people are, are really, really important in my life. And also John Hobbins, who was our mentor, and Larry Platt, who was my second mentor. He, he, he grabbed me from Yale and took me to the East Coast. And the way he recruited me, he put me in, a, in his little convertible and drove me along the coast and said, see, this is much nicer than the East Coast with the snow. And all of the colleagues that I've grown up with, Roberto, we were, we were residents together when Roberto barely spoke English. Uh, and 
we've just grown over the years together, and Josh Capel, who, who, who followed me at Yale, Alfred al Muhammad, a number, uh, Wesley, a number of colleagues that have become great friends and great supporters. So I thank them all for the, for the opportunity that I have today to accept this award. And I would say to those of you who are younger, who are looking at your careers, my, my only advice would be simply find something you have a passion for and then go for it. And don't look behind because the future is wonderful as you explore things that someone else has developed. Thank you very much.